Welcome again to the Midweek Wednesday Night Bible Class Bible Study for the Southside Church of Christ here in Orlando, Florida. I'm thankful, glad, and happy. Actually, I'm elated that you, you and especially you, have carved out time in your arduous schedule to be a participant with us here at Southside as we study and do an exhaustive study on God's holy book, the Bible. We hope trust and pray that this series of studies on Wednesdays and the sermonic dissertations on Sunday, we hope, trust and pray, they're proven to be helpful, useful, beneficial to you and yours as we all try to make this magnificent trip from earth to glory. We're still on a spiritual high. I am. I was privileged to participate in the 20th a year anniversary of my best friend, uh, Brother Xerxes Snell at the 9th Street Church, and as that congregation <clears throat> celebrated 82 years of existence, uh, myself and several members from Southside were able to participate in To God Be the Glory. We're still praying for Sister Taz Smith and family. I had the responsibility uh, to eulogize and bury her son, her 20-year-old son, Malik, on um, last Saturday there in uh, Umatilla, uh, Florida area. And um, I'm soliciting for her and the family your continued prayers as they continue to try to grapple with the uh, significant loss of a son, a brother, <clears throat> a grandson, nephew, cousin, friend. And so you can understand that those people and all those all those who are going through the going through need and desire our prayers. Tonight, 
Beloved, I want to address you from a topic, a lesson on uh, the sacred versus the secular. Sacred versus secular. There's always challenges confronting the Lord's church. Denominationalism, sectarianism, factionalism, and uh, traditionalism. All those things challenge uh, our growth and development in the body of Christ. Each of those issues and many more uh, contribute to the church changing its face and sometimes even its doctrine. When the church becomes carnal, when the church is fleshly, uh, when the church has more worldliness in it than godliness in it, when the church is more concerned about society than Christ, uh, these are things we need to examine, uh, to study, and to conquer for the church to remain a sacred institution of God and not be infiltrated to become a secular institution of the world. Uh, I'm sad to report tonight, there's a trend, there's some algorithms uh, spiritually that are trending the church toward secularism. There's an inherent danger <clears throat> in the church becoming more worldly uh, more fleshly, uh, more concerned about things that will lead to our demise. I believe it was John the Apostle who declared we live in the world, but we are not of the world. We, we live on earth, but our citizenship, Paul said, is in heaven. And so, beloved, tonight, I just wanted, been led by the Spirit to discuss the sacred versus the secular. Let's first deal with, under the first umbrella, secular or secularism. By definition, that which is secular is that which is worldly. Uh, it's more worldly than spiritual. It relates to society and not Christ. That's secular. Uh, it has no, a little relation, secularism to the church, religion, or Christ. Nothing sacred about secularism. Secularism falls under the umbrella of the temporal and the carnal. Secular people, <coughs> or secularism, is when views and opinions by one or group discards or rejects any form of religion, faith, worship, or church. The great Paul warned against secularism. He put it under the umbrella of carnal. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. Paul begins to describe secularism. He put it this way. I would give you meat, but I still got to give you milk, for you're not able to bear meat. Why? Because you're yet carnal. You're still worldly. You're still secular. You're still fleshly. Now, remember, note, beloved, he's writing to Christians. He's writing to the church at Corinth. He tells that great church, that you're carnal, you're secular, you're worldly, you're fleshly. I want to give you substantive meat, but you can't bear the meat because every time I try to give you meat, you're so carnal-minded, you're so enveloped and engrossed into uh, secularism, I can't give you weightier matters. And this is, I believe, one of the... Um, uh, things that have happened to the 21st century church. When you try to give substantive teaching, doctrinal teaching, they regurgitate because carnalism and fleshly and worldly beliefs does not stomach, it does not 
stomach spiritual teaching very well. Secularism is one of those damnable things that has now infiltrated the Lord's church. Rather than being a more sacred institution, sometimes myself and others have found the church to be more secular than sacred, at least leaning toward that way. Spiritual offices, see, the church is a spiritual institution. The church by nature, na nature is a living organism. It's not an organization, people. It's an organism, a living spiritual organism. If we're not careful, even when we do things, do the right things, but we do them the wrong way, it can lead us to a form, a high form of secularism, and we will uh, be void and destitute of the sacred institution the church really is. You see, the church does not have uh, political offices. It has spiritual offices. The church does not have uh, political positions. It has spiritual offices. Preacher, evangelist, man of God, pastor. You, 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 you who is uh, commanded by Paul, that position of evangelist and preacher and minister is commanded by Paul to find, train, and ordain Godly men who will serve as elders, presbyters, shepherds, uh, overseers of the flock. And then they are to help superintend the, uh, the spiritual component. But you got to have a fleshly side, a physical side of the church. Deacons are saddled with that task. You see, what I'm telling you tonight. The church is a spiritual organism that has some physical characteristics. Elders and the preacher oversee the, the doctrine, the, 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 the shepherd in the flock, and discipline in the flock when needed. The deacons are the motor of the church, making sure this is done right and that is done right and properly. The deacons and the elders and the preacher work cohesively together for the good of the body. Those, that component of spiritual leadership, though, can never stop functioning like board members and corporate managers. See, sometimes, none of that is bad, but when it infiltrates the church and the church then takes a carnal or a a uh, secular model and replaces the spiritual model with a secular model, the church is in danger. Because a man is a good manager or uh, a good uh, high office holder on his job does not mean he might necessarily be a good spiritual leader for the church. It does not exclude him, but that alone cannot be the qualification for him to be a leader. When staff and figureheads become the standard for the church, when committees replace spiritual decisions, when department and superintendents replace prayer and fasting, the church is headed toward secularism. We're not there, but I warn our church and other congregations of the Lord's body we need to be keenly aware of the infiltration of secularism that was spoiled the sacred. When marketing and public relations become more important than spreading the gospel, these are the things we have to be aware of. And in this internet age, with this live stream age, with Facebook and YouTube and and all the other apparatuses and Twitter and all these things uh, that the world looks to for information and we have to tap into those resources. We have to use secular things to sp spread the spiritual message. But yet we ourselves 
need not and should not become secular. We have to also be careful, beloved, that the church does not become a social club. We have social activities. Again, see, uh, take one pill, don't take the whole bottle. I am not preaching against uh, things that we must do, ought do, and learn and use to infiltrate a lost, dying world. That's not what I'm saying. We do a lot of social activities, which is warranted. But this church is not a social club. You don't come to church just for your social activities. It's a subsidiary. It's a byproduct of the sacred. You know, I, I learned, again, what you learn about people, the, COVID did not uh, show who people are. COVID revealed who people really are. Some people really come to church for the social activities. See, they just want to sing or they just want to have the church cookout. They want to have the, uh, the DJ there. They want the bounce house. They want the fun, the cotton candy. They bring the kids for activity. They bring them to get candy. Don't bring them to get no word. They, they, they like the fact we're on YouTube and Facebook. They, they, they're in the social media age. It's like, it reminds me when, when I was in high school, or uh, better yet in college, a lot of athletes, they don't, they're not there at the University of Alabama and the University of Georgia or FAMU or BCU to get educated. They went to play football, okay, and when uh, play sports or be in the chorus or being in some other social civic organization. That's why they don't stay. They just stay long enough to fulfill that, that itch. And they scratch it with their social activities. Too many people think the church is a social club. Again, I support, matter of fact, I demand that we have social activities. But the church is not a social club. You see, our emphasis never can be on gyms and fellowship halls and babysitting and cookouts and entertainment. All that's fine. But you don't set up your church with its modus operandi to entertain children or adults. Those are byproducts. Those are consequences of the sacred. Because you got people, you got to have social activities. Vince Lombardi said it this way. I love it the way he stated it. Still the best, one of the best I've ever heard in his memoirs, one of his books after he retired as the legendary coach of the Green Bay Packers. Vince Lombardi stated it's not what you teach. He was asked a question. Uh, how did you become the greatest coach in NFL history? And of course, if you don't know, Vince Lombardi won the first two Super Bowls. And he was such a great coach with the Green Bay Packers. They named the trophy, the Super Bowl winning trophy, the Lombardi Trophy. It's named after Vince Lombardi. They asked him what was his secret to his success. Other coaches tried hard, studied hard, planned hard. Vince Lombardi said something I'll never forget. It's helped inculcate my preaching. He said, it's not what you teach. It's what you emphasize. And see, here's what people do, I think, in my humble opinion, my elementary and incompetent way. A lot of us who preach the word of God, a lot of congregations, a lot of leaderships, we all teach the same thing. Jesus is God's son. You got to be baptized, get in the church, holy communion. We teach all the same things. Man ought to be married to a, man, a woman. A woman ought to be married to a man. Children ought to obey their parents. We teach the same things. But Vince Lombardi says, it's not what you teach, it's what you emphasize. The difference between a medium church, a bad church, and a great church is what they put emphasis on. A lot of churches emphasize the social construct of their church. Nothing wrong with having that wing, but the emphasis of any church, the lowest church, the emphasis ought to be on spiritual and the sacred and not on the social and the secular. Preach, Brother Leonard. Let's move and segue into the sacred. We've been talking about secular things. And again, I want to put a pin in the point. We are not teaching tonight, I'm not, that you don't need social activities and there's an infiltrate, there's a usage and value in 
social media. Uh, that's not what I'm saying. And and even worldly models and role models. Jesus even said in the Gospels, the children of darkness are wiser <clears throat> than the children of light. We learn a lot from secular people and secular organizations. And some of us are so silly, you know, we anything we think that ain't in the Lord's church, we can't learn from. Man, listen, I heard T.D. Jakes doing a, uh, a good speech one night on church security. How do you keep your premises safe? Now, I, I don't care what you think of the man. Look, look the information he was giving was good. Uh, you can go to any organization the bank is a secular organization. The college is a secular organization. But they do have valuable information, even though they are secular organizations. So let's not dismiss the secular, but let's not be dominated and let's not be motivated by secular things more than sacred things. Sacred is that which is holy. Sacred, by definition, is that which is sanctified, useful to God, set aside for God. The church is a spiritual institution. It must keep its sacred components in place, even though in the subsidiary we use secular methods to get out a spiritual message. Folks, you cannot be so married to a method that you can't change. Our message never changes, but our methods must change. How we dissimulate, how we communicate, how we relate to a dying and lost world must change with the times. Amen, somebody. But our message, our eternal message, must stay the same throughout eternity. The church is a place of worship. It's a sacred place. The church, as commanded by Paul in Acts chapter 20, verse number 7, Paul declared upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread or commune, ready to depart on tomorrow, and Paul preached all the way to midnight. The church gathered to worship, commune, give. There was in a spiritual uh, message given by the man of God is sacred. That the first and foremost thing the church does is worship God, praise God, work for God, live for God. All the other things we do, great things, uh, programs, organizations, uh, all those things are just great, but they must never be the main thing. You never major in minors, and you never minor in majors. You got to keep the main thing the main thing. Paul declared in Hebrews, or the Hebrew writer rather, declared in Hebrews 10, 25, that we should never forsake the assembly of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but even so much the more as we see that they are approaching. Some of you so married to methods. We assemble now online. The majority of people assemble online. We still assemble. Assemble online. I'm not so married to the method. I am committed and married to the message. I preach the same thing whether you were there in the pew or you there in the pajama church. You're going to get the same sermon. The method has changed. The sacred nature of the church, though, must never change. You see, when people have social needs, even physical needs, here's what the Bible teaches. Families are expected to take care of the social and medical needs of their own family. This is what I'm most disturbed about, this thrust in our nation, government, and society, that everybody gets taken care of by the government. What happened to families? I, I'm supposed to feed your kids. I'm supposed to educate. You had them. You feed them. That, that's what that, that's what God teaches. Well, you don't believe that. Read, read First Timothy chapter five, verse sixteen. Paul said, "Listen. So you got widows and sick people in your family. You take care of them, family, so that burden is not on the church, unless it's a widow indeed, a widow in need, meaning." She don't have anybody to take care of. She, there's no family, no nephew, no cousin, no son, no daughter. The primary duty of care comes from families. 
now we've made it so easy for people to abdicate their own responsibility. And that leaves a lot of people with a sense of entitlement, tragically. The church is there as a safety net for our members. We are not a social program for the world. It's a sacred institution. I, I got it. I, I know we do a lot of things. We feed the hungry. We clothe the naked. Oh, that's great. We care for the elderly. Oh, man. We got benevolence. We got evangelism. We, we got all that going. Isn't that great? We're going to keep all that up. But the main thing is to keep the church sacred with the holy message of the gospel is to bring people from the world into the church, train them, equip them to be good soldiers of Jesus Christ. That must always be in the forefront and the frontlets of our ministry. And then when we do other things, they are well, uh, they are needed and valued, but they must never be the main thing. You see, this change from the sacred to the secular does not, over, not occur overnight. It's a gradual shift. It's a gradual drifting. Church over time has started drifting toward a secular nature. Entertainment, showmanship. Uh, we must always be reminded from the poor pit to the back pew, we must be reminded that this is a sacred, living, spiritual organization of God and not be overtly uh, dominated by secular things or secularism. We must always put at the frontlets of everything we do to teach, preach, live the word of God, to praise God, to worship God. That's what the church does. It's a hospital for sick people. It, 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 it's God's spiritual ICU. Our church must then equip people. Once we get them in, you got to keep them in. You got to give them tools for the toolbox. Equip saints for the ministry and the work of the body of Christ. Most of the ministries we do have to be outside of the building. See, one of the fool's goals, I believe, that the church has accepted erroneously, uh, I'm working in a ministry, but everything we do is right there at the church, in the building. Ministry is designed to go. That's why the Great Commission that ain't so great no more. Jesus said in Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, go ye into all the world and make disciples. And once they get, then he said, once you get them, then you teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo, I'm with you always, Jesus said, even to the end of the world. Most of our teaching and equipping saints must be done outside of the church. Or rather, once we equip them, the ministries you work with are designed to go outside. And once we go outside, usually that's when the secular influence infiltrates us. Yes, yes, a thousand times yes. Parents, professional, and individuals, professional people, parents, and individuals can do a lot of things that we've saddled the church with doing. And because the church is doing the job of parents, the church is doing the job of what professionals ought to be do, and the church is doing in place of individuals, the church then can lose focus on the main thing. You see, the church is not an entertainment organization. The church is not a hospital physically. Uh, individuals, members can contribute to charitable things. Parents raise and discipline their children. Professionals, professional people offer services to both members and non-members. The church's main goal is to evangelize a dying world, to help people in need, and to equip them to serve Jesus the Christ. Our focus, our goal, our commitment, our sacrifice should always be for the sacred. Even though secular things happen, they can never become the dominant 
factor in any church. Wise leadership that I uh, know we have at Southside can draw lines, distinct lines between the sacred and the secular. I'm here tonight to tell you, just put us on warning. This great church we are at at Southside, oh my God, I, I don't know a better one than I can say that honestly. Do we have problems? Yes. Got people? Yes. Got issues? Yes. <laughs> Got a couple of knuckleheads? Probably so. Do we, do we fall short? Yes. But when an aggregate is done of the congregation, we are more sacred than we are secular. But we're wise enough to use secular means to spread a sacred message. Wise leadership can draw lines, distinct lines, between the sacred and the secular. Which are you tonight? Are you more sacred? Or are you more secular? I would encourage you. I would admonish you. In the holy name of Jesus, all of us, me, you, 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 and especially you, let all of us make it our determinate goal to be more sacred than secular. God bless you. God keep you. That is my prayer. I certainly enjoyed addressing you tonight. Be with us this Sunday morning, December the 12th, second Sunday in December, 11 a.m. at the Southside Church of Christ, 4701 Raleigh Street here in the city of beautiful Orlando. If you can't make it to the sanctuary for whatever reason, please, ma'am, please, sir, uh, join us live stream on all of our social outlets. Uh, this Sunday, the 12th, after, immediately after worship, uh, those who can and will will go to Winter Haven, Florida, Hilltop Church for a prayer visual and picture taking for the national lectureship will be here in Orlando next September. Come go with us. We would appreciate it. God bless you. God keep you. This is our prayer. Always remember and never forget. Make sure you're more sacred than secular. Good night.